still working in chapter 11. Let's look at how we're going to account for purchasing merchandise and how we compute what we call gross profit. So we have some brand new account names, purchases. So this is the product that I'm buying, purchase returns and allowances. So I, the buyer, might return something to the seller. It would fall under purchase allowances or returns and allowances. Purchase discounts. So when the seller offers me 2% 10 net 30 and I take it, that would be a purchase discount. And finally, freight in. So think about this. I am the buyer. I buy from the seller. When the seller ships to me, I have to pay freight. Consider that freight in to me. That becomes part of the cost of the purchase. So here are my new accounts and how they're categorized. So just like in Chapter 10, my purchase returns and allowances and my purchase discounts are actually attached to my purchase accounts. So my purchase accounts are debited, normal balance is debit, my returns and allowances and my discounts, normal balance or credit, and freight enters debited. So when I talk about what is the actual cost of my product, it's this minus this plus freight. Okay, this is called the cost of my merchandise purchase. And let's take a look. Here we go. I made a hundred dollar purchase for cash, and if I do it with cash, I'm going to debit the purchases. By the way, purchases are an asset, things I own, and I will credit cash because I spent money. However, if I made it on account, here's what it looks like I'm going to debit purchases and I'm going to credit accounts payable. And notice we're going to have accounts payable slash and the vendor name because just like chapter 10, I'm going to have an accounts payable subsidiary that will keep track of all of my vendors so I don't get confused. So often when I purchase, I might have to return. And if I do, it's going to go to the purchase returns and allowances, and it's called a contra purchase account or a contra cost account. So its normal balance is credit where the purchase normal balance is debit. So I actually, when I close it, I'll have to debit it to close that account. So merchandise purchase on account for 200 is defective and returned to supplier. Here's what happens. So I'm going to debit accounts payable for that vendor, which means I do not owe them $200. And now my purchase returns has a $200 balance in it. This reflects returned merchandise. Now this is when I turn return full merchandise for credit, but if I only return it for a reduction or an allowance, so I have the same merchandise, but I only sent back $45. I didn't send anything back. The supplier gave me a reduction of $45, and I kept all the product. Maybe it was damaged. Here's what's going to happen. That would be an allowance, and I would still do only for the amount getting credited, the $45. So now I really, if that other account was 200, now I really only owe them $155. So this is purchase returns and allowances. Now let's look at purchase discounts. So my purchase discount is also a contra purchase account. And um, it's always cre I'm credited no matter what. And so this is when I, the buyer, take the discount the seller gave me. I bought product for $100 on account with credit terms 2%, 10, net 30, and I paid them within the discount period. So this is the journal entry for me paying them. So I sent them only $98 cash, but I'm going to debit accounts payable for $100 because I do not owe them any more money, and I'm going to have a credit of $2 in my purchase discount. So this explains purchase returns and allowances and purchase discounts. And this is video number two. So the next one we'll talk about freight.